Sebastian for the Metal Gods Meltdown, and I'm joined by... Oscar from Hammerfall. Built to Last is stunning. How pleased are you with the finished pr- product? Um, I don't think I could be any more pleased. There's, uh, we worked, the, the work on this album was a little bit uh, difficult, a little bit different from, from previous albums, but uh, you know how it is, you know, when you work hard enough on something, it's gonna, the, the, the end result is going to be even sweeter. And I do think that this album turned out to be everything that I envisioned it to be when we started out writing the songs. I'm very, very pleased with, with the, the songwriting and, and the composition of the album. Uh, I, I think if you're a Hammerfall fan in 2016, you you almost have to like this. <laughs> it's basically, that's how, how good I feel about it. I mean, I've been listening to the album non-stop. I think it's amazing. You've been around since the early 90s. Is the album title Built to Last a statement of intent? Yes, absolutely. That, that's basically what it is. It's Normally we have some, some little bit more uh, harder to grasp song titles or harder to remember uh, album titles like uh, Unbent, Unbowed, Unbroken, for example, was difficult for a lot of people, especially a lot of non-English speaking people. They didn't understand what it meant. Uh, so it's not always easy, but for this time we felt like built to last 10 years, I mean the 10 albums in 20 years, uh, that's a perfect name for, for this album. That, that's basically how we reason. Hammer High, that's such an addictive song. In fact, I can never get that out of my head all day. That's the idea, right?
obviously that's going to be in the set list. Is there going to be many songs from the album when you're playing live? Oh, we haven't really decided that yet. Uh, we're in the process of deciding it, I think. But uh, you know how it is. After all these years, it's getting more and more difficult to find to to, um, to uh, find room for the new songs. I mean, obviously we have to play some new songs, and, uh, but we also have to play some old songs. So it's just a balance that we have to make. Um, to, to, uh, just, uh, it, it's difficult to find that balance between everything, but. I'm excited. I think that all of these, it, no matter which song you choose, I think they're going to fit really well into the uh, to a live set with Hammerfall. So I'm, I'm really excited about that too. The music industry has changed so much over the years, and you're now signed to Napalm Rep Records, and you're going to be doing like a limited 500 vinyl pitch discs. Um, how important is it to you guys that the fans are able to get such exclusive products? If you look at our history, it's always been kind of important because we came from a time where. Uh, we were record collectors, I mean vinyl collectors, so uh, this picture disc thing was something I actually asked for this time, because we haven't done that in many years. I don't remember when the last time was, but it was not in the last couple of albums for sure with Nicolas. Uh, but they've done a lot of other things that I thought was cool. I remember from for um, both Heating the Call and Renegade, they did these cut to shape picture discs, you know, the single th uh, things that they do, and I, I love, I, I collect those a lot to have. I think almost all of the ones that was released, uh, they did a lot of those in, in the 80s. Uh, and it's just, those things are just, you know, th those are for me personally. I, I like to be on those types of things because I've been collecting them myself my whole life, more or less. Um, and picture discs also, that it's the same thing. It, it serves a purpose. I mean, nobody's listening to the picture disc because the albums, I mean, the audio sucks, basically. Mm -hmm. It's it's for show, for collecting, and that's uh, and there are a lot of collectors out there that, that want this stuff. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's a great great opportunity to, to give it to them. Uh, but as far as the other, like, the other um, uh, limit, I mean, exclusive editions of, of Built to Last, those are all... Uh, Napalm Records idea. I mean, they, they come up with what can we do? Uh, you know, they, they have a, a they had a plan what they wanted to do basically, and and that's what we what we liked about Napalm. They they wanted to have some ideas of how to to move the band forward and not so we won't feel like we're standing still. How to help the band grow, and mm -hmm. I think that was the the main reason that we wanted to go with Napalm because they 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 saw potential in 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 uh, growth instead of just stagnation. As I've said already, I love all the tracks on the album. I just can't get enough of it. But if I was uh, totally new to Hammerfall, I've never heard of you before, which two tracks from the album would you play me to introduce me to Hammerfall? I think if you've never heard Hammerfall before, you should start with uh, Hammer High, because like what you said, it's, it's a, a song that's very difficult to get out of your head. This type of song that it's impossible to write on purpose. It just happens. Uh, at least the, the chorus. Uh, and I think basically you could pick any other song you want or any two songs at all. But uh, I think Dethrone and Defy is one of those that that, uh, that ties the new Hammerfall together with the old Hammerfall really well. The classic, timeless Hammerfall song, I, I think. And of course you head out on tour in 2017, starting in mainland Europe. You've, you're playing Hammerfest in the UK. Are there plans to try and get some more dates over in the UK? We are, we're working on it, and there are definitely, definitely plans that I'm sure that is going to happen. Uh, but we have, and there's nothing I can tell you right now. There's nothing is official. As far right now, it's just things being talked about. So uh, I, I think that uh, there will, something will definitely happen next year. I just don't. I, I'm not just sure exactly what will happen. Okay. But there will be more than Hammerfest. The album artwork is always sort of really eye-catching and stunning. Do you have a lot of the artwork at, around your house? That's a good question. Over uh, uh, 20 years, so I've never got that question. <laughs> have you not? Uh, yeah, no, never. I never even thought about it, but to be honest, yeah, I don't have anything like that, unfortunately. That's a great thing to have, but I mean, the, the guys who do these paintings, I don't know how, how you know, for Sam Weiss, for example, who does, has done a lot of covers for us, and artworks for us, he does the stuff in the so I'm not sure that there are actually, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how many of our album covers are actual paintings, you know. I don't know. That, that might be something I'm, I, I should look into. It would be, be fucking cool to have, uh, you know, Renegade or, or one of the earlier uh, Marshall albums on the wall. That would be really, really cool. Uh, yeah, 
When you're out on the road, music do you listen to, or do you just sort of like take a break from listening to music? Uh, it, it really varies. Uh, normally, you know, when you're on the road, you don't really listen that much to music because there's so much music going on anyway. But uh, sometimes, like if you go for a walk on a day or whatever, you know, on a day off or something, it's it's kind of nice to have some some other music to listen to. That's not what you're playing every night on stage. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, I, I think usually that's what it is. Actually, it's like in, during the day, if you listen to something, it's more like a relaxing, soothing thing. But on the other hand, if you're, there's a party on the bus after the show, uh, you know, when we travel to the next city, uh, that you know anything can come up there. And that's everything from you know Man of War to uh, King Diamond and Merciful Faith, and, and you know whatever music gets us charged, you know. You return to North America for the first time since 2010, and you're going to be with a band I love, Delane. How excited are you about that part of the tour? Oh, that's going to be fun as hell. I mean, this is going to be our first tour in seven years in the U.S. over North America, so it's going to be interesting to see what's what the difference now from from now to then is. But uh, also going to be really interesting to do a, a, a big tour with another band over there. Normally. Uh, uh, this is a co-headline tour, this one, with Delane and Hammerfall, and, and I think it's a good package because hope, the idea, obviously, is to bring fans of both bands that, that, that so that then, uh, they, even if they're just a fan of one band, they will become fans of both bands at the end. That's kind of the idea, obviously, you know, to have, have a diversity. And I think that's a good, we stand a pretty good chance because if, if you like Delane, there's a good chance you're going to enjoy Hammerfall and vice versa, too. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to see how that turns out. Uh, like I said, seven years uh, is the last time we toured the U.S. and that was a long time ago. A lot of things have changed since then. Of course. If you hadn't been a musician, what do you think your occupation would have been? Realistically, probably a teacher. Some kind in history, probably, because I was going in that direction when when, uh, when we recorded the first album for number four. But uh, if you're talking about what I, if I got to redo my life, you know, and not choose there are two options that I want to do. Uh, the, the first one is to work with animals in some capacity. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter what. Uh, just, you know, working back because I really love animals and I, I sometimes I prefer them over humans. Totally. <laughs> um, and the, the second one is more of a fantasy thing that I, I you know, that I, 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 I've been a major wrestling fan for since early 90s. Since 91, actually. And uh, something to do with wrestling would be a dream job of mine. Have you ever uh, been a wrestler? Oh, no, no, no. I did have a... Because wrestling in Sweden is, has been... Now it's, it's actually uh, pretty uh, accepted. But over the years, it was... It, everybody, like, uh, even in the 2000s, people who thought wrestling thought Hulk Hogan in the 80s. That's all, the only way... Uh, the only... Uh, uh, only way that they've been exposed to wrestling was Hulk Hogan in the 80s, that sort of thing. So they thought everything was was that still, and uh, uh, it didn't really get any traction at all here. And now it's got. Yeah, we actually do have some wrestling organizations, uh, so it's, it's it's much much better than before. But um, there was really never any. That was never any option. So uh, I had a Swedish fancy uh, wrestling. I was uh, I, I put together my favorite news from. Uh, from, from you know, the Pro Wrestling Torch and uh, Power, the British uh, magazine Power Slam was very big, very good for me there as well. I used that a lot, uh, together with compilations of you know my my thoughts on on the various pay per views and stuff. That we, just a, a basic magazine, uh, I mean a basic fan scene that had a little bit of everything for for people who were enjoying wrestling in Swedish. Uh-huh. And I was doing that. It was on a small scale, of course, but it took up a lot of my time. So right. uh, I, I had to stop doing it after, uh, I think, eight issues or something like that. Right. But uh, it was a lot of fun doing it. Anyway, I, I enjoyed that immensely. During that time, if there was any chance for me to work with the wrestling in any capacity, I probably would have taken it. When you were over in the States, it might be worth hitting up Chris Jericho and jumping in the ring with him, hey? <laughs> yeah, that, that would be fantastic. I'm, I'm actually going to contact him uh, and tell him that. I don't know, he's, he's probably going to be on the road with it with uh, the WWE. I mean, they're obviously touring a lot more than, than 
any rock band does. But uh, I'm actually going to tell him, uh, at least going to tell him where we are, and if you want to come, it would be fantastic to, to, for him to check it out. That, uh, that would be. If, if I can go to a wrestling show, it would be even better. I mean, that, that's jumping in the ring. Obviously, is, is, is uh, only a fantasy. But just, just you know, going to a show, a real big wrestling show, would be really. It's been a long time since I did that. No, so. Looking into the future, what would you like Hammerfall to be remembered for in a hundred years' time? Uh, not a great question. Uh, uh, I think we. I would like Hammerfall to be remembered as a band who defied the odds and didn't listen to any critics or any anybody around them uh, just did their own thing and uh, managed to succeed beyond everybody's uh, biggest expectations I think the easy answer would be you know man warriors just, yeah, but all that stuff but I think that's incorporated in this the metal the heavy metal spirit I think is doing what you want to do uh, doing things the way you think they should be done without regards to people who quote unquote no better uh, because if we listened to people around us there would be no helpful today uh, and we had some things we played an important role in the resurgence of melodic metal again at the, towards the end of the 90s and for that I will always be proud brilliant can you tell me why we should buy Built to Last yeah uh, that all depends on your musical preference I think uh, I mean if you do like melodic heavy metal uh, with a lot of energy and a lot of hunger. Even after 20 years, we still do have a lot of hunger uh, in performing and in playing and, and recording. And I think that that in itself is something that if people value that, that's something you should check out. Uh, and even if you don't like the album very much, you should go to the shows that we have because they are uh, comprised of songs from almost every album and they're always very energetic. That's Our, our goal for the shows is to have a big heavy metal party every night. That's that's basically what we try to do, and uh, I think that we we for the most part succeed in that. Uh, thanks to the great great audience that we do have. Thank you for your time today. Do you have any final words for your fans and our listeners? Uh, no, I hope you buy the album. Hope you enjoy the album, and I hope to see you whenever we play in the UK next. Hi, this is Oscar from Hammerfall, and you are listening to the Metal Gods Meltdown. The great. A, a mix of two of my favorite Judas Priest songs.
The second cut blinded his eyes The third cut gave us all the answers The final